I think I came come up with an idea after we talked to the Seaport people and they came and did the field or the um, field trip with us. Okay, so what was your idea? Um, my idea was Dr. Alvarado was talking about that um, their myth that there are no fish in Silverboat Creek, and she said, "Well, actually, there are." fish in a certain sections of Silverboat Creek, and I'm wondering if there's fish in one section, why aren't there fish in the other section? Okay, so that's a really good start. So you have, your first question is, if there are fish in one section, why not all? Right, mm -hmm. did I get there? Okay, so where, where do you know there's fish versus not fish. Is there any details you have about that or any any research that you've done about that? Um, I haven't done very much research yet. Okay. And so we know from the CFWEP class that actually in the restored section, that's where there's, we haven't seen any fish, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the still still to be restored fish, the restored section, there are fish. Yeah. Okay. So. We would expect them to be here, but not here, mm -hmm. right? So what's your educated guess? What do you guess is going on? Maybe in the restored section that it either wasn't restored correctly or there's something missing there. Okay. There's something that's still polluting that section. Okay, so in, in this section where there's no fish, you, you kind of have two directions you're going. and then, first direction that you're going is that really there aren't any fish there and something's up. So something is causing there to not be fish. There's mm -hmm. a reason. That's called your alternative hypothesis or just your plain old hypothesis, okay? Mm -hmm. Now on the other side is that we maybe just haven't seen them and our observations are inaccurate and there really are fish there. We just haven't seen them. And that's called the null hypothesis. And what that means is actually nothing is wrong. Okay? Do you get the difference between alternative and null hypothesis? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to set out to do is reject our null hypothesis. So we want to start gathering some data and set up our, our test to see if they're is something affecting the fish, all right? The other thing is, is that we want to compare this part, the restored part where we're finding fish, to this part, because that will help support the data that there's something different here than here. Okay, so let's go see Dr. Alvarado and see what she can do to help us come up with a good set of testing variables. Okay. Okay. Dr. Alvarado? Oh, hi! 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 Ray Lynn Carolla called you about oh, my yes. student who is interested in the Clark Fork Project. Yes, and this nice is Ivana. Nice hi. hi! So nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. And she was interested in looking at fish in Silver Bow Creek. After Seafoot right. visited our classroom, she got curious about the fact that there are fish in the non-restored reaches, but there aren't fish in, in the restored reach up closer yeah. to Butte. So she'd like to kind of pursue that question and Great start question. talking about how to set up a research design and how you go about collecting some data. Okay, that sounds good. Why don't you come on in and um, I'll just talk to her for a little while. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Hey, so Ivana, tell me a little bit about your idea for your project. Well, I was wondering why my question is is why there are fish in the not restored reach of Silver Bowl Creek but there are not fish in the restored reach closer to Butte because if it's restored then there should be fish there right but if it isn't restored then why are there fish there? That's a great question have you had any ideas like what you think might be going on there? Well I think it might have something to do with the five C's I remember when CFLAP came to our classroom they talked about these and it was cold clean clear, complex, and connected, and I'm thinking maybe something's missing there, but I'm not sure what. And that, I was wondering how to take some data and do that. Yeah, that's a great approach. So um, the main thing when you're setting up a study is to make sure that you know your variables. So like you just mentioned, the cold, clear, clean, connected, and complex, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, and we, we know in general that fish need these things. In Montana, fish definitely need these things. So um, we definitely want to like assign variables. Do you know what variables are? Um, sort of. There aren't they like um, things that could make your experiment different? Like, um, sorry, I don't know how to explain it. Where they oh, that's okay. Yeah, you're you're really close there. So variables are the type of thing you're going to measure. Like with cold, that would be temperature. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's called a variable is because you think it might vary between conditions or treatments. And so definitely, like with cold, the variable there would be temperature, right? And yeah. so that's a great thing and easy to measure, easy to measure temperature. And then what do you think uh, the variables might be with clear? Um, maybe turbidity. Exactly, that's great. You've done your homework. Very good. Yeah, so we want to measure turbidity. And then clean. Mm, the minerals in the water, or the vitamins, like the stuff in the water that the fish need. Yeah, right, like, um, or <clears throat> more like, like clean, like free of pollution. So like, um, of course, in our area, we're concerned with mine waste, right? Mm -hmm. So the fish are really sensitive to some of the metals. So we want to make sure the water doesn't have too many metals. So we want to measure metals. Um, and then nutrients are needed, but in excess, they mm -hmm. would be bad. So we want to know that there are, uh, what the nutrient levels are. And I also remember in the restored reach, there is a sewage treatment plan upstream. Does that have anything to do with it? Yeah, that's another reason why we definitely want to see how the nutrients are. Um, my colleague, Bev, has done some work on the silver bow, and she found that they have spikes in uh, nitrates and nitrites and ammonia. So that definitely could be hurting them. So we're definitely, those kind of fall under nutrients. And then what about um, the complex part? What would you think would come under that? Um, does that have anything to do with the biodiversity, like the plant life that's there? And yeah, that of course can be a whole bunch of different things. But I, I agree with you. I think vegetation. Also, um, you know, part of clear and complex would be the stream bottom. You know, are there a lot of rocks for them to find their food under? Because, of course, the fish are going to be looking for food. And then the other part of the complex is, is there the other food, the, the biodiversity of insects that they like to eat? So definitely macros would be something to collect. Um, and just the stream bottom itself is a very important part mm -hmm. of... Because they might come up and find food, but if they don't see that there's a spot to lay eggs, and they like to lay their eggs around rocks and gravel, they're, they're going to split. Oh, well that sounds like a great idea. We can see where the fish prefer to lay their eggs. I mean, like, how does anyone know that? Oh, actually, that's a, that's a great question. And you bring up a really good point there about um, things that we, we can do within our means and the equipment that we have versus things that other people have done. Um, lots of scientists have looked at that very issue of where do fish prefer to lay their eggs? You know, they sent them little surveys and the fish filled them out. <laughs> oh, I'm only kidding. <laughs> yeah, so what they did was uh, they set up different looking environments and they just saw how many fish laid their eggs. Did they lay them near big rocks, small rocks, or whatever? But that's a huge elaborate experiment. It goes on inside and, you know, we wouldn't really be doing anything like that. Um, we want to do things that are easily testable. You know, they're there are questions that are not testable in science, and um, there are questions that are very difficult to test in science, and then there are easily testable questions. And for most projects, even for my own work, I like to stick to easily testable because they're also easy to explain, they're easy to set up, easy to collect data for. So um, we already, we'll do our background research and find out what should the stream bottom look like and then we'll go in and do a sample of what the stream bottom looks like, just in a small area, you know. The other thing we have to do is just sample things. We can't know 24 hours a day, you know, mm -hmm. every day of the week, every day of the year. We can't know all the conditions, so we're just going to sample things. And hopefully, in our sampling, we'll be able to determine 
that there is a difference between these two areas and what the differences might be. And, you know, we might find... So one thing I wanted to mention is um, the idea of, like, so you mentioned the two reaches, one mm -hmm. with fish, one without. Those are definitely two great sites to compare. But it's really important that we don't let other things interfere with our measures, like, so we need to have controls. Do you understand, mm -hmm. like, the idea of controls? Yeah, so, you know, we want to use the same equipment for sure. Okay. Um, we want to do the same types of measures. And even the same people collecting the data is a really good control, because if you have different people, they might do things differently. Um, and then um, I would pick same time of day, same general season. So, you know, those are the things to keep in mind. But we can go ahead and start to lay out some of your design and just go ahead and look at it and um, see what you think about it. And if you have anything else you want to add or any other questions, we can pursue that. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm.